What's up guys, today we're gonna to be talking about how to master your one-handed spin serves for 2022. Whether you like it or not, these spin serves are gonna be here for at least one more year, so you might as well learn how to do the serve, or at the very least, learn what the tricks that people are trying to use against you are. I am going to warn you now that this video is going to be on the longer side, so I've created timestamps that you can use down in the description to skip through to the section that applies to you most. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So as far as the rules go for this serve, the USAPA has decided to allow for one-handed spin serves in 2022, but serves like the two-handed chainsaw are officially out. There are a few proposed clarifications in the 2020 rulebook, and these are subject to change in the beginning of January, but right now the ways that the rules are written is that you have to toss the ball with one hand, you cannot use any other body part, you are only allowed to use your non-paddle hand to toss the ball, you can toss it up if you want to, that's fine for some reason a lot of people think you can't toss the ball in the air. That's perfectly legal as long as you still hit it below your waist. And the ball toss must be visible to the ref, if there is a ref, as well as the player. If the ball is not visible to either of those people, then a replay may be called before the ball is struck. In 2021, some people were using tricks where they would hide the ball behind the paddle so you couldn't see which direction you were spinning it, or they would have their doubles partner stand in front of them so you also couldn't see which way the ball was being spun. In 2022, you can no longer do that. So the main rules to note are that you have to use one hand and no other body part to toss or spin the ball, and you are not allowed to hide the ball from your opponent or the ref. All right, so since I made this video, an update from the PPA actually came out announcing that they will be banning all spin serves for their 2022 tour. This isn't the first time that the PPA has decided to make a different set of rules than what the USAPA is using. So at the pro division, you cannot do a Morgan Evans toss, you cannot do a two-handed chainsaw, and you cannot do a paddle chainsaw. Now what's interesting is you probably will be able to do these serves in the amateur division. These rules generally only seem to apply to the pro division for the PPA, but we'll have to wait for clarification from them to see if you can actually use them in the amateur division or not. So just to make this really clear for everyone, if you do a USAPA tournament, or an APP, an unsanctioned tournament, or rec play, the one-handed spin serve is legal because those all use the USAPA set of rules. If you do the PPA in a pro division, you cannot do any spin serves. I know there's gonna be a lot of confusion everywhere on the internet. People are gonna read the headlines and hear spin serves are banned and think that they're banned everywhere. Again, they're not. The PPA decided to make their own set of rules like they have previously by not allowing drop serves, let serves, or the paddle chainsaw last year. The exact wording from the PPA is, the server shall not impart manipulation or spin on the release of the ball immediately prior to the serve. The release of the ball to perform the serve shall be visible to the referee. If the referee determines that manipulation or spin has been imparted or the release of the ball is not visible, the referee shall call for a reserve. Let me know what you guys think down below about the PPA using different rules than the APP. I personally think it's a little bit bizarre and I'm not sure how that's going to go for the sport in the future, but let me know what you think down below. All right, so let's talk about how to spin the ball. The method I will be talking about is the one popularized by Morgan Evans. I specifically want to talk about this one because I think it is the best way to spin the ball, and it's also the most misunderstood method when it comes to one-handed spin serves. To spin the ball like Morgan, you take your middle finger and thumb and then hold the ball between those two fingers across from each other. Now, hold your hand so that your thumb is closer to your body and your middle finger is directly out in front of your body. To start the spin, you apply pressure between your two fingers like you're trying to squish the ball. Then to initiate the spin, you start letting your thumb roll over top of the ball while you try and snap your fingers. The key to getting good spin on the serve is snapping your fingers. If you do not snap your fingers, the ball is not going to spin very much. The quicker and harder you can do this, the more spin you're going to get. And that's really all there is to this, but it is quite hard to learn. It took me at least a month of just snapping the ball around my house to get to a point where I actually felt kind of comfortable doing it. And then even bringing it onto the court is a whole nother story because now you have to uh, involve the rest of your body to actually hit the ball. So you're gonna have to practice this a lot to really get it down. So I would recommend in your office or around your house, just walk around and snap the ball a couple thousand times. It's going to take a lot of practice to get a consistent toss. 
Now, I just wanna talk about a common misconception I see with this serve. So a lot of people think you take your thumb and middle finger and then try and pinch the ball. I've seen a lot of people do this and I'm here to tell you that this is not a good way of trying to do a spin serve. The problem with this is people are pinching the ball out of their hand and the ball spins in a completely random direction and the amount of RPMs you get are not consistent as well. This results in people doing spin serves that get almost no kick at all, or if it does happen to get any kick, they don't really know what direction it's gonna go. The reason the spin is random is because when you pinch, there's nothing dictating the direction of the ball when it comes out. Whereas when you do it like Morgan, your thumb is going over the top and the middle finger is going down to make the ball spin forward. So now to make the ball spin left or right, all you have to do is bend your wrist in the direction you want it to spin. To do top spin, you would hold the ball right in front of you. To make the ball spin to your right, you would cock your wrist towards your body where the palm is facing your stomach. And to make the ball kick left, you face your palm away from your body towards the court. To make it easier to spin the ball in either direction, it can help if you also turn your body in the same direction so you don't have to bend your wrist in such awkward positions. Just be aware that the trade-off is if you turn your body, that also helps give away which direction the ball is going to spin. Because generally speaking, whatever direction your chest is facing when you go to do the serve, that's where the ball is going to go. So if you can do the serve where you have one stance and all you're changing is your wrist position, then that can help confuse your opponent a little more if they're looking for which direction your body is facing. So yeah, please don't ever pinch the ball because that's just not going to get any good spin. It's random. You can't dictate how much you're going to get, what direction the ball is going to go. It's kind of just like a lazy way of trying to learn the spin serve. One more thing I wanna cover is the Shea Underwood serve. Shea debuted this serve a few months ago and tons of people are talking about it now. It's another way of spinning the ball between your pointer and middle finger instead of your thumb and middle finger. Ultimately, I think the Shea and Morgan spin methods are just different and one isn't necessarily better than another. I had Shea send me some clips of him spinning the ball to analyze the rev rate and he was averaging about 1400 to 1500 RPM, where my brother with the Morgan toss is averaging around 2000 RPM. When doing these serves, you want as many RPMs on the ball as you can get. So in that regard, the Shea toss doesn't seem as effective as the Morgan toss. But realistically, someone else might be able to eventually do the Shea toss with more RPMs and we'll just have to wait for more people to do it. But generally speaking, I just think the muscle group in your thumb and your middle finger are a lot stronger than the ones in your pointer and middle finger and trying to squeeze a ball inside of that. But again, the serve works great for Shea. So it's kind of hard to argue with the results, but just something to think about. One unique advantage of Shea's serve is that it can be more difficult to see which direction he is spinning the ball. In general, I would say it's still not that hard, but I think the tell for reading the Morgan toss is significantly more obvious than the one for Shea's. So if you're at least trying to catch someone off guard that hasn't really learned how to do this yet, you'll probably have an easier time with Shea's serve than you will the Morgan serve. But once people learn all the different tells for these serves, it's all gonna be about the same. So ultimately, you'll have to decide what is more comfortable for you and which you can consistently get good spin with. I've tried to learn the Shea Toss and I just cannot get any good spin with it. Maybe my fingers are too small, so for me, I'll be using the Morgan Toss. I'll leave links to Shea's video in the description and you can check those out as well. All right, so when it comes to hitting the ball, there are three primary options you have to keep your opponents on their toes. That is a drive where you go for less kick, but more pace, a slice where you're going for maximum spin, and then a misdirect where you slice the ball in the opposite direction that you spun the ball. So let's go over all three options now. Driving the ball. This is where you hit the ball like you would any other regular serve, but you're aiming for more of a top spin based stroke. So if I want the ball to kick right, I'll turn my wrist towards my body, toss the ball, and then hit a drive. This is going to produce a ball that stays lower, moves quicker, but still jumps to the right just a little bit. But it's not going to jump nearly as much as if you were to slice the ball. This serve is best when you can get the ball deep because this gives them very little time to react with how fast the ball is going, as well as the jump it gets at the very end. When it comes to doing this stroke when you spin the ball left, it's a little bit more difficult and may take a bit of practice. The reason for this is because you need to toss the ball up and slightly behind you and then step to the side so that you can hit the ball properly. 
Now for slicing the ball, this is where you're going for maximum spin to bring your opponent off the court. If you really hit these right, sometimes you can get the ball into the fence before your opponent can get to it. When doing this, you just want to slice in the same direction that you are spinning the ball. There really isn't anything tricky about this one except for slicing with your backhand. I've actually only met one other person that does this during a spin serve and I think it can be incredibly effective and it allows you to bring them out wide on either the left or right side of the court. There's no real secret to this other than that you probably have to practice it a lot. Personally, I find that I get more kick off of my backhand slice than I do my forehand slice. So I think it's very worth learning. As far as the grip goes, I use Continental for my backhand slice and Eastern or Continental for my forehand slice. All right, now let's talk about misdirects. This can be some of the most frustrating serve that you can use against people if they don't know how to read these. The misdirect can be super beneficial for tricking your opponent into thinking you're going for a big kick serve in the direction of your slice, but then the spin from your hand actually makes the ball kick in the opposite direction of the slice. The spin from your hand generates more RPMs than the slice from your paddle, which is why this is so effective. So even when you slice in the opposite direction, there is still some spin on the ball that's going to carry it the other direction. But this is all dependent on how much RPM you can get from your hand. Now, depending on the paddle you use, it can actually have a pretty big effect on how some of these serves work, particularly the drive and the misdirects. If you use a paddle that is known for getting a lot of spin, like the Carbon, Electrum, or other high spin paddles, it's going to make misdirects and drives harder to use. The problem is because the paddle grabs the ball so much that it takes away a decent amount of the spin from your hand toss. If you only slice the ball, these paddles would be great because they only contribute to your slice and generate even more spin. So just be aware that the paddle you use can have a big impact on these serves. So now that you have all of the information, it just comes down to practicing a bunch. If you've never tried to do a spin serve toss, expect it to take at least a month of practicing only the toss just to get decent at it. These serves are a lot of work to learn and to do properly, but if you do master them, they can be a great benefit for mixing up your game and keeping your opponents guessing. Just be aware that as more people have learned these serves, they are becoming less and less effective because more people are getting familiar with how to return them. In the next video, we'll be talking about all the tips and tricks you need to know in order to return these serves. So if you wanna see that, make sure to click the subscribe button down below and I will catch you guys in the next video.